I hadn't known Stitch Mania was a thing, but now I know. So, here is what I decided to do. Um, there's no way I can do 15 new starts, but I did buy a couple of things, and then I thought I'd dip into some of my whips that aren't currently being worked on, and just kind of have fun trying a bunch of different things in a short period of time. I made it out to my LNS on Saturday and I had wanted to see if they had some of the Mill Hill bead kits. Uh, they had a few, not, not a huge selection, but enough for me to find something I really liked. I would have bought all three. There's a Scottish Santa and a Welsh Santa as well, I think. This is the Irish one. But I chose this one. I decided I can start with one. I can always get the other two later. And so I picked this guy up, and the intention was to start him on May 1st. I started him the last day of April. It was just too much fun. The kit is pretty concise, it's well packaged and so on, but the threads are not sorted. So this was my solution. It's a horrible solution, don't do it. And if the kit was any larger, if there were any more thread colors, I think it would have been truly disastrous. I'll manage with this but I'll figure something out for next time. And here he is so far. I haven't gotten to the beads yet, but the thing about this is you, you feel like you're accomplishing something uh, with every color finish, and so you want to keep going. I think I stitched till close to midnight on, on the last day of April, and then I did a bunch more today as well, the first. Um, my niece, who's not even five, helped me by pulling the thread through. And uh, she's got a remarkable amount of concentration for a kid her age. And she stuck with it for quite a bit of the green, the medium green color. I also went shopping online a little. And because of Flosstube, I found out about all these different neat online vendors and Etsy shops. So I popped into Cloud's Factory. And I picked up two patterns. I can't show you Little Red Riding Hood because she didn't, I don't think she came with a cover sheet. But cute little Matryoshka dolls, there they are. They're adorable. I have eight of cloth. I had almost all the floss colors. So this will be a fun one to stitch up in between all the bigger things that I'm working on. I'm going to work on some whips as well. And this is what the earth um, birth announcement looks like when it's done, although the name, the personalization will be different. And I'm not adding the zodiac sign in the bottom corner there. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to stick to any really hard and fast rules for, for Stitch Mania, but I am going to have 15 things to pull from. And this is one of them. I'm so close to being done. You'll see in the next few pictures some some progress. I'll flip through them fairly quickly. One thing I wanted to mention, if you look carefully, the back stitching on the sample here, it's quite dark compared to the the skin tones of the baby. And so I'm considering switching that out. To me it looks a little strange. It would look better if, if the baby had darker skin tones, but it doesn't, and the child who's receiving them doesn't. So I I think I'll end up switching it out a little. Number five on the Stitch Mania count is a Haid. Yet another thing that I'd never heard of until Flosstube. And so I wandered over there and sure enough I found something that I really liked. I printed it off in black and white but it is a color mini. And there were so many new things to learn with this. Um, and so many new terms. Well there's Haid for one and full coverage and two over one and one over two and one over one and uh, I learned about loop starts and I learned about gridding. I'd never done that before. More of that later. So lots of new things going on here. I'll try to link it in the description, but this is the tutorial, the YouTube tutorial that I found to be really helpful. Now, just just to be really clear, you'll see later on I made a bit of mistake in in my gridding. 
that is not the tutorial's fault. That's my fault. I just wanted to be clear about that. So when I bought the the pattern, I couldn't get to my LNS. Uh, they're closed on Sundays, and I was in town on a Sunday. So I had to go to Michael's, and the closest thing they had to the suggested fabric, which should have been a 25 count, was this Even Wave Lugana 28 count. So I bought it. Um, it's tiny. I'm doing one over one. It works best in daylight. Um, just It's just so very tiny. If I ever do another Hade, and I think I might, um, I will do it on 25 for sure and not 28. But I'll make this one work. Here's where you can see uh, I got impatient with the gridding and decided to start stitching. Um, when I get close to where I need more grid, I can always put it in. I used a nylon thread. Um, the tutorial suggested fishing line, and then she mentioned nylon thread works as well, and that's what I had available, so that's what I used. Um, if you do it right, you get these neat little crosses where the lines intersect, and I somehow did it backwards something or another, uh, so this is what I ended up with. But I'd never gridded before, and I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised, by how much easier it makes things. I've only had to frog the odd single stitch here or there, maybe two, which is a good thing because frogging on this size of um, even weave is next to impossible, for me at any rate. And so I'm really appreciating those little grids. And a bit of a close-up. Um, I've actually completed a bit more and you could see that in the previous picture, but I wanted something a little more um, detailed. You can begin to see some of the shading. This is basically a, the background or the, I don't know, the night sky, something like that. So there are an awful lot of dark colors here. But I'm really enjoying it so far. So we'll see how long it takes me to get a page finish. This next project for Stitch Mania, it's so close to being done. I basically just have to do French knots for the eyes. I, you can see it in this close-up. I tried French knots on the doll behind Santa there, and to me they look too big. I don't know. So I'm going to dig around in my beads and see if I have some tiny black beads, or maybe try French knots with one thread, or something. I'm not sure. But this one is really close to being done, and it won't cost quite as much to frame because uh, I won't be putting glass over it. So, so it's, it's close. It's maybe the closest one that I've got right now. You can see the full thing here. It's a bit of a weird angle, but you get the idea. The pattern calls for a, a type of bow. You stitch a, 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 a bow, basically, and the little ornaments hang on each bow, but to me that seems sort of flimsy. So I found these really tiny Christmas-themed buttons, probably at Michael's. And um, and sewed those on. And you'll see the ornaments in the next picture. Those will get a little loop. And hopefully that will complete the thing. And the little ornaments. They're all stitched on plastic canvas. And I think they're all done. Except for, again, eyes. And French knots on plastic canvas I find to be almost entirely impossible. And just because you need to put your needle down slightly apart from where you came up. It's kind of hard to do on plastic canvas. So I'm guessing beads will be coming in handy again here. Winter Sampler. This is a Janlin. And here you can see what it's supposed to look like in the end. Um, I actually bought this as a pattern from my local needlework store a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure it's not available as a paper pattern anymore, although you can download a PDF from Cooler Designs, K-O-O-L-E-R, or you can get it as a kit from Janlin. Here's what I've got so far. Uh, when I pulled it out, I don't know, the coverage didn't thrill me when I looked at it for a second time, but it's not awful, so I think once it's done, this sampler has so much going on that, and the colors are pretty vibrant, so I think it'll be alright. Eventually I'd like to stitch all four, 
and have them as a rotating display, but that's a really long-term plan. I'm excited to get back into this one for Stitch Mania. I haven't touched it in ages, so it'll be fun to add at least a little bit. Moving right along. This one's called Tulip Time. It's another Janlin kit. Um, it's rather large, I guess mostly because it's done on a large piece of Ada. Um, I probably got it. I can't even remember exactly why, but I, I'm guessing I bought it with the idea of doing it maybe for my mum. Um, she was born in England, so I thought the thatched roof might be a kind of a neat look to stitch up for her. Um, so I included this in my Stitch Mania just because it might be nice to stitch on something nice and chunky and large and give my eyes a break. And I do like the colors and kind of the, the countryside setting. This was not one of the whips where I was surprised by how much I had done. You can see here how I usually work. I stitch almost everything in hand. I only just recently got a Q-snap or a Q-snap type thing um, when I bought the hate actually. So, so I generally start in the middle, work my way over to the right, go up and down, and then work my way back um, towards the left so that my fingers aren't uh, touching the stitches, at least as much as possible. They aren't touching the stitches. So there's there's not a whole lot done here yet, but I think in one day of solid work I could add, you know, at least a couple inches and and feel like I've at least touched it in the last few years. Next on the list, there's this endangered species booklet, I guess, of patterns. I'm pretty sure I started this in high school. So when I opened it, I had no idea where I would have left off, but it turns out I'm pretty much done. And here they are, the two swans. This was taken long before I knew anything about dyed fabrics. It would have looked gorgeous on many other fabrics, but it'll do. I don't know what I'm going to do with it or who I'll give it to, or I, I don't know. but. I just need to check it over and make sure there's no missing stitches. I think there's something around the eyes that needs finishing up. And so I guess the day that I work on this whip will be a washing and ironing kind of day. This is another one I started a long time ago. Um, I do want to stitch both pieces eventually and I have fabric for both in the bag. Uh, but it's the pelicans that I started. I remember there was some kind of issue with a background green color. It seemed too bright. So I think I'm going to end up frogging that and choosing a different color. I don't know if that has to do with the DMC number switch that I've heard about, but I think I think it's too old for that to be the issue. Maybe it's just a misprint. But um, this the pictures remind me of um, some of the areas around here where we used to go in the summer as a family, and and um, and it just looks airy and clean and fresh and Although I know when you're around pelicans, it usually stinks like fish. It just, it looks like it would be clean and fresh. And this is what I've accomplished so far. Um, you can see the smaller pelican taking shape there, and I'd worked my way mostly along the bottom. Uh, the green kind of behind the pelican is the green I'm concerned about. But we'll see what happens there. Um, I started this a long time ago. And it'll be fun to, I don't know, maybe I can finish the bit of that smaller boat or, I don't know, add a little bit so that it's more fun to get back to. For this Stitch Mania choice, uh, we're going back into ancient history. You can probably tell from the colors and the stains. I'm pretty sure this chart would have been bought in the 90s, maybe created in the 80s. And I know I stitched it when I was still in university, and that is about 15 years ago. So, it's been a while. Originally it was intended as a gift for someone, but I know their tastes have changed drastically. They're no longer into dusty rose and dusty blue. So, um, I don't know what I'll do with it when I finish it. Hopefully I'll find someone who thinks it's gorgeous. Here's my progress so far. I don't know what it was, but I remember there was one part that I stitched and re-stitched and re-stitched. 
Um, I'm hoping it's not the bit that's not done yet, but we'll see. As you can see, there's not a whole lot left to go. The one wise man and his camel, and then a little bit of words, I guess, or some stitching in that small frame, and then it'll be done. It'll need a really good wash, and this is apparently from back in the day when I tried to use a hoop, and I don't like how it squished some of the stitches, but I'm hoping that washing will kind of lift that out. This is the whip that I thought of first when I decided that I would pull out some of my temporarily put away whips. Um, it's just, it's fun. I really like it. And I, I'm not that far along on it, but you'll see, I, it's not, it's not just a bare start either. And the colors are, are vibrant and happy and, and it's childlike and, but it's, but it's not childish. I really like this design. Here's what I've got so far. I'm hoping that as part of Stitch Mania I can finish up that red jacketed bunny and maybe get some more done on the duck. I'm guessing that's Jemima Puddle Duck. We'll see. The tree has candles on it which thrills me to bits and it'll, it'll be fun to do. This is another one where I wish I'd known about hand dyed fabrics a long time ago but it'll be okay. It'll be fun. It'll look clean. It'll look like an illustration in a book on paper, which makes sense since it's a Beatrix Potter um, piece of artwork. So uh, this one, I'm, I'm looking forward to it being done, or at least making progress on it. I dug this one out just because I, I had originally started it for a friend who was going through a rough time, and my thought was I'd write a note on the back about how this was for her and when she felt that it was time to pass it on she could pass it on to someone else who needed um, the sentiment as well. The verse is the it's from the Bible and it's about I have thoughts of hope towards you and so on. Um, but it's been quite a while since since I started it and it feels a little bit silly to give it to her now. But there's a new situation. Maybe maybe it'll work out. Maybe it'll work out. And this is another one where, yeah, I pulled it out and I didn't realize I had that much done. So um, I'll show that to you in a minute. But first I just wanted to show you the, the front of the magazine. Oh, there it is. It's a just cross stitch. Don't worry about my address showing. That's not my address. Um, and I hope you can see the the volume number there. I'm looking at a smaller version right now so I can't see it but it's a relatively recent one um, and if I remember correctly I actually really like the design on the front. I love lemons. Lemons are yummy. So um, but that wasn't what I ended up stitching. And here's what I've got so far. This one has a few specialty stitches in it if I remember correctly. Um, I'm not a fan of yellow there are plenty of people who like yellow and I have nothing against that but personally I have a hard time with yellow but it's kind of a mellower color in this sampler and there's the the purples and the greens kind of balance it out um, but I do I, I hope I can get a substantial chunk kind of bitten into this one so that um, so that I I pick it up again I'm hoping that stitch mania will kind of make me want to finish it more urgently, I guess, is the way I'm thinking of it. This is another one of those floss tube enabled things. I'd never heard of the frosted pumpkin stitchery. And all of a sudden I started seeing this and a few of their other samplers floating around. And I love to read and I really read voraciously when I was in school. And a lot of the things I read were those classics, those old time books. So this would be perfect. I have sort of a light green fabric I want to do it on and that might mean that I change the frames. And I've also thought of, instead of back stitching the frames to make them pop a bit more, I've thought of spreading them out a bit more and back stitching a stitch away from the cross stitches of the frame, if that makes any sense. So I'd need to space the frames apart a little more to make that happen, but I think my fabric's large enough to do that. 
We'll see. It, this would be a brand new start for me. The other thing is that when I went to my LNS, they didn't have the week's dye works that I needed, and she's ordering them for me. Um, but I'm guessing it'll take a while to come in. There was only one. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I would like to just get a start on it just so that I can say I have started. Witsy and boof. Um, here's what it's supposed to look like when it's done. And here's where I was at um, as of my previous floss tube video. So I had done a lot of cross stitching. Um, there was still a, a large star missing at this point. Um, the rabbit, big chunks of the bird's PJs, and there's a blanket underneath them as well that was missing. Here's where I'm at now. That big star is in there. All the cross stitching is done and there's just a little bit of back stitching left to finish up plus the personalization but that won't take too long and then it's a matter of washing it and then it's a matter of getting it framed and that's not cheap but it'll be worth it it's a keepsake and i think i think the kid who's getting it will like it it's cheerful and fun and i think his parents will like it too which sometimes matters more than what the kid thinks when they're that young so I'm really looking forward to being finished with this one. It was fun to stitch, and even though, as I mentioned previously, I really hate yellow, I I bore with it because I knew it would be fun for a kid. So, so I managed. And that makes 15 things to work on for Stitch Mania. I thought I'd end by showing a finished object, a fully finished object, fully finished quite a while ago. This is a Teresa Wensler. Um, I probably should have done my research, but I forget what the name is. Uh, I got rid of the chart a long time ago. Um, this is something that I stitched up not knowing how difficult it would be. I think if I had known and if I had realized how difficult the blended threads and all the fractional stitches and so on and so forth would have been, I never would have started it. But this is a piece that that I really love. Um, to me, there's it's more than just a dragon and a storyteller and a castle. To me, it says something about the power of stories and how it can tame and teach and and how you can build relationships through story. Just a couple of close-ups. Um, there was a little bit of beadwork on this one, um, some metallic thread, as you can see. And this close-up, you can really see um, some of the detail and the shading that went into it. I remember working on the the sort of the Celtic braid pieces. That was it was really fun to see it form and with that 3D effect as though it were woven. Um, but yeah, lots of fractional stitches. The last close up, and uh, so here you can see the the dragon listening intently to the storyteller, and some of the detail on the face. I never was entirely happy with. The storyteller's eye but I think when you back up it's just part of the picture and it's not quite as jarring as I maybe initially thought it would be. I do remember working on the back stitch and just being so eager to be done. It was a great project. It took me through a fairly difficult patch. I needed something that would take my mind off of things and this definitely did because you had to concentrate um, to make it work. So. It hangs in my bedroom. I'm really glad I have it. I don't know if you noticed before, the frame's a bit chewed up. It got a bit damaged the last time I moved. But I think I'll just be able to dab some paint on it and it'll be okay. That's it for my Stitch Mania post. It's been kind of long. Hope you've made it through. Um, thanks for listening. And I really, I've really been enjoying listening to and watching all of your various floss tubes and picking up tips on the way and learning all kinds of new terminology and and tricks and things um, so I hope you enjoy this one too thanks for listening again um, comment or like if you feel like it and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day